of the house is uh, some removed, mm -hmm. and then they have taken just only the dead person yesterday afternoon. So my house is not set. So anyway, this is a native house. Only the roof is the galvanized iron. <coughs> See? It is not cocoon. So welcome and good day. So before we proceed, uh, I introduce uh, the first farmer, the lady farmer, and now uh, we have the member of the Barangay Council, uh, Kagawad uh, Noel Chulipa. He is the number one uh, Barangay Council. So uh, she's a member of the council. That is why we readily availed of their seats from the Barangay Hall. So, yeah. so, I think you can start your questions already. He is also, he has also a farm below. So, they are employed uh, in other agencies, but they have also a farm to till during weekends, during holidays. I, I'm interested in these earthworms. I, because for us, we like our forms because they break, they break up the soil, but it's, it's a paddy system. Is that, is that, I'm interested in what the problem is with them. Are they ruining the hard pan? Uh, earthworm is very good because uh, they cultivate the soil and then their manure is used for fertilizer. But those are the advantages. But there are there are also disadvantages. They will make holes in the rice fields and then the water will go to there and there is where the slide will come out. If there are more water that will push through with the holes they are making, the rice paddies will be slide down. So are they introduced like they're not native? Is there on the in the fields that those are nobody introduced that earthworm? It is uh, in the rice paddies itself. When we were walking up, we we saw a lot of lodging, and we're curious how the plants recover from the lodging. Are they pretty resistant to that? Lodging houses. Yung po palay natin nakalats pa na nakatapa. So yung po ba ay babangon nule o ganon na po yun na? Well, that depends because if the typhoon will not follow then at least they will slowly come out or the farmers will help them let it stand. They will take the stick because that is a, that is a pest to the farmer because they have a small harvest. Uh, but at least for the matured one, they will get it. But for the young one, they will help it uh, stand or if it cannot stand or the, those are losses of farmers because the typhoon came ahead before the harvesting season. And it was even very strong. I think you have seen that uh, rice fields there. Yung po ba dahil sa tubig o dahil po sa hangin? Dahil sa hangin. Yeah, because of the wind. Very strong. And maybe you observe the height, the height or the length of the soil. The size of the rice paddies uh, 
the number of harvesters depends on uh, the size of the paddies. There are farmers who can uh, bundle uh, 20 to 30 bundles a day like this. And there are those who can bundle 10 to 15 <laughs> like this. So, so here, instead of kilogram bundles. or bag, their unit of measure is a bundle. Okay. How, how many bundles in one? <laughs> Nobody. You can count. You can count. Size of the bundle. Yes, but there was one farmer who scheduled the harvesting now, but uh, she, he was not sure if it will still uh, rain today. That is why uh, he did not continue to harvest, so that uh, you 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 can see how the the bundle or the harvest because uh, automatically the harvest with the flag leaf and then uh, automatically the hands is is uh, separating the flag leaf from the the rice panicle so after which they just remove all the flag leaf and then it is just again arranged yeah. so they are used to that they are fast in getting are these different uh, uh, rice or that is a glutinous one? rice that is newly harvested and this is another variety yeah. uh, Raymond mentioned about a bundling so if you have a bigger bundle that's uh, for seed then if uh, a smaller bundle for uh, grain for table. so is that the size the big one the size for the seed bundle Mm -hmm. Times pa two. Ba yon? Yon ka? Times two. That that one and uh, that one will be that so is the size bigger. of the about four to five kilos. So it's a still a bigger one. Still, bundle still bundle. bigger. It will be like yeah. this. There. Yeah. It will be combined. Yeah. And this is our, this is but the the other one is too little. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so the, the other one. The seedling they will sow in the rice field is they select it. This wow. one is not selected because this is only for consumption. Yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> I would like to ask about uh, rice fertilization here. the grasses that is those are the grasses we remove from the rice paddies we put it there in the rice fields so that that is what we use for fertilizers See, because we only plant once a year so we do not use uh, fertilizers the fertilizer we are using are the grasses we remove from the rice uh, or the rice straw we put it there in the rice field yeah. and, and the average of rice productivity here is average uh, yield? Yeah. Oh, that depends. That depends because here it is not by hectare, it is by rice paddies, yeah, by small pars pars partial. So, for example, like this. Yeah. That is one partial, one piece. Ilang pong bundle lang nakukuha niyo? That depends. It depends. Ito, kalit na po. Sa tingin niyo, mga ilang bundle? For this one, mga around three or four bundles. Three bundles. Or, because it is very small, eh. Three by three? And one bundle po is four to five kilos. No, not exactly four to five kilos. Ito yung yun, okay, bundle yun. So one bundle here. It also depends because uh, if the grains are all good, it will go to the
but if the grain are not so good, it will take two and two point five. So on the average. Average, huh? Average, ano, ng 2.5 per bundle. So, itay mismo. Oh. Uh, the number of bundles that they harvest times 2.5 kilos per bundle. That is the number of kilos. Because they are not all the same. Each farmer have their own uh, uh, area. Size. Uh, what percent of the rice harvest that ends up as rice that is eaten and rice that is turned into wine or rice beer? What's the breakdown there? Pardon? What percent is eaten and what percent is turned into wine? Uh, it depends also on the farmer. If he likes to grow all glutinous rice, then he can. If he is that farmer who usually like to have wine during harvest or during any occasion, then he may plant uh, more glutinous rice like that. That is why uh, uh, this farmer have that glutinous rice. He planted more like this because they have more occasions on the council, so they have something to... I mean, because you heard about rituals wine. today, uh, the wine, rice wine is a very important part of most of those rituals. Consumption, you will buy from someone else. Yeah. Yes. 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 So the, their harvest is not enough to sustain their needs more than a year. Because we only plant once a year. If we plant two or three crops a year, maybe that's enough for us farmers. But then only once a year because of the climate. Do you, yes. What are the other major sources of income for the community? Uh, aside from palais, we have vegetable. We plant vegetable. We plant sometimes those are vacant areas. We plant kamutis, sweet potatoes, or uh, uh, peanut, or corn, or gabi. For those uh, vacant areas that are not planted with uh, rice, I palais. So, so mo most is still agriculture, so there's not much income from other sources? Uh, as mentioned, Mom is a retired teacher, sure. yeah. and then Kuya is a uh, barangay official. So uh, aside from the rice, you can get it from the rice. Yes, sometimes uh, other sources of income, we weep. We do the weaving, like this. Yeah. This one, I make this. I made it myself. So this is their native clothes here. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. And then aside from uh, that, they, they have carvings. Uh, my kakagawa is carving, wood carving. So tourism, is, is that... Um, <laughs> Is that a big part of the economy, like yeah. for the weaving? And yes. yes, exactly. It is even very strong. If, uh, if during uh, festas we sell this in the market, and one like this is before it is only 150, but now it is 250 per blouse, and this one is 500 per tapis. This one. This is very easy to weave, only what is hard is this one, making of the design, and then this one. Okay, but weaving, weaving here is very easy because there are no designs. Oh, that depends. If you do it, it will be like that. So I will add her, their sharing. 
Uh, actually, during the rice far farming cycle, uh, when they have a small size of rice field, uh, after it was transplanted, of course, uh, you have to wait again. So the women are engaged in weaving or they go somewhere else to earn uh, the per day basis. The, any work in the somewhere, maybe outside the barangay, outside Banawi. Then the men also went to, it depends on their skill, if they are carpentry, carpenter, then they go somewhere else to earn. Because they have nothing to work in the field. They will again wait until uh, their labor is needed in the field. So the men, after land preparation, uh, they already go and uh, seek for other job, like carpentry, or working during our irrigation, or repropping, any kind of work for the men. So they might go outside Banawi or inside Banawi, uh, those who can do offer work for the men. So they will again return when the harvesting is near. near because they are the ones to haul the bundles of palay. So after harvest again, they go again to look for job. The same. So actually, they are not uh, concentrated on their rice field. They have uh, off-farm uh, work. Like for the women, they weave during uh, off-season. While waiting for the rice field to be weeded again, they weave or they find work in somewhere else. Then they return again when weeds are uh, growing over the rice uh, palai or rice uh, plants. So they have to weave again. I weed again. After weeding again, uh, while waiting for the harvest, they continue. Looking for work so that they will augment uh, their income, or they might go to engage in gardening somewhere so that uh, they will uh, augment their family income. So that is how they. Our number one challenge is to abandon rice fields without water. Oh, and those earthworms that are causing all the Those are challenges that sometimes if you do not clean the rice fields, then they have festa on the rice fields. <laughs> Sana the government will help the farmers so that they will rebuild the dikes and then the water to go to the rice fields. So at least uh, we got a lesser problem. But I hope so. Some days the government will see our problems. Mm -hmm. How does the market work in here? Do you sell individually or do you have a farmer's co-op to sell? Do you sell bundle or milled rice? Actually, the, we have one cooperative uh, down. We have an office there. We will visit by and by. Uh, this barangay has no member. I, the, there is no farmer from here who happened to be a member of that cooperative. Uh, it is one barangay who raises the heirloom rice because these are not uh, the exportable uh, varieties. Uh, we saw a while ago in the 
the picture, the presentation on the red, red rice. That is the aromatic heirloom rice that is uh, being exported to the USA. And it is planted in one, uh, one or three, I uh, two barangays uh, there on that side. But uh, it is very far. They have already finished their harvesting because they are earlier than these barangays. So they began June and finished their harvesting July. So they raises maybe next time around when you will be here, when you will be when you are here earlier than June or July, uh, they are harvesting time there. So they are the ones who are members of that cooperative because of their uh, tradi uh, heirloom rice that they raise. They pledge only, they, they are not uh, compelled to put that quota. It, is, it depends on them on how many kilos do they pledge to, to come up with the number of kilos to be exported. So those are bigger ones and uh, aromatic, more aromatic. Maybe we can see by and by because uh, this time the farmers there from that two barangays are already milling for quality control to be exported. Before, during our days, our parents taught us how to work on the rice fields. But for the younger generation now, it is very difficult because you know how much you train them to go. Maybe those uh, good children they are trained to help their parents, but that depends because uh, now they have many inventions like the computer. They do not like to go back. Some of the children are helping us. Our children are helping us. But before, uh, we are compelled to obey our parents. But now, time changes. And children also change. But at least we have the nerve to control our children to be trained to help us once in a while. I had a similar question. I was curious what percent of the children in, in this uh, brown guy in Bogos stay in Bogos or what percent go to other cities? That depends because if they like to go, they do not have work here, they will go to other places to find work or those our children who are studying, we do not have college here, they go to other places to so to bug you oh, for further studies. Is it more than half that leave or less than half? Or? Agency natin, Department of Tourism, Department of Agriculture. Doon po sa Department of Tourism, meron po ba kayo, may naibibigay po ba kasi lang sa kailang tulong sa inyo? Department of Tourism po. So I'm asking uh, there are two uh, decent that uh, they need support from the government. And there are two units or department from the government who are in uh, two separate. Department of Tourism and Department of Agriculture. Uh, so we use that Department of Agriculture directly. They benefit from the department. But about tourism, is there any uh, contributions? Ano po naiyan na ng Department of Tourism po? Sa mga farmers. Very good question, sir. But then sometimes, uh, well, they help us, but it is not enough. Ano pa? Ano po? Anong pasing tulong po? 
for example, the rebuilding of the dike, repropping, repropping of the rice field. Oh, you hit me and I could check me at the Amina benefit. So, really, it's maintaining the rice terraces, not on the production of the farm, just the rice terraces. Okay. So, maybe we can start showing them how we do the. For the. We will expound that question. We have a what we call a special agency, the Ifugao Heritage, Cultural Heritage Office at Lagawi, based at Lagawi. They are the ones uh, uh, consolidating uh, he uh, help from assistance from other agencies, and then uh, they bring the improvement here that is repropping of eroded rice uh, fields, but uh, only a few, they prioritize the farmers whose rice fields can be seen in the, the tourist spot. So not all of them benefit, it is only. And we have also availed from the, the we have a um, Ambangal Dam, micro dam here in uh, Lagawi, the central capital of the of Ifugao. Uh, they have a, Banawi has a share, but I think uh, it is not enough also. So one farmer benefited, but it is uh, that barangay, viewpoint. Uh, they have rehabilitated the abandoned uh, area there, which was, uh, all the slides went there. So uh, as of now, they have already planted it to rice. So we have assistance from the government, but it's barely enough to cover all the farmers who need the assistance. And then from the Department of Agriculture through the Municipal Agriculture Office, we also make proposals from the Department of Agriculture Regional Office for those mechanical uh, equipments for micro tillers, for post harvest facilities like the milling facility and uh, other irrigation irrigations, but uh, not all uh, areas here in Banawi again is being uh, assisted. It is because uh, the fund is limited. Fertilizer. Uh, that is the traditional way of since it is once a year that they they plant. I think uh, all the grasses, all the rice stubbles that they clean, they put them there for it to be decayed, and then uh, that is enough for to sustain the production for one year, and they are not sold to <coughs> using commercial fertilizer because these traditional uh, rice are not so receptive uh, in to commercial fertilizer and then uh, the law of water you can see the rice terraces from the top the water is flowing uh, downward